I agree that pursuit of justice in an unjust system is still a worthy pursuit. So let's do that. Let's do all those things. Am I optimistic about the future that will result? Not at all. Because it's the system that underlies the myriad predicaments we're facing. Hello, I'm Stuart Scott, director of scientistswarning.org. Welcome back to part two of my conversation with Guy McPherson. He and I spoke earlier this year, and I challenged his dire predictions of near-term human extinction, culminating in a wager on whether or not we'd be around in 2026 to see who was correct. At the end of part one, we discussed one of the most extreme consequences of the potential collapse of civilization under runaway climate change, the possible shutdown of the electrical grid, leading to nuclear power plants around the world unable to cool their spent fuel rods, turning the world into a nuclear popcorn ball. With that in mind, we picked up in part two when I asked him, what should we be doing? What can people do? I agree with the notion that Jamin is promoting because it was my idea in the first place, which is to to allow for mitigating the worst case scenario so that we don't leave behind 450 and change nuclear power plants melting down catastrophically. I think that's important. I think it's important for us to pursue miracles. Hmm. Yeah, call them miracles. Out of the box thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to call them miracles, not in the spiritual sense, but it could be a miracle like all of a sudden sudden some species of bacteria or zooplankton that gobbles up carbon dioxide and sequesters it. Something breeds itself, you know, uh, something emerges that will, so there, there could be miracles. So I think leaving the door open to those and when a potential solution comes along that can be implemented at scale, being ready to do it as, as an entire species, not as a government of a country, but as an entirely species, a Manhattan Project at the level of the globe for the sake of humans and other species on the planet. And I don't, I don't see that kind of urgency being taken by almost anybody with respect to the planetary emergency we are right in the midst of today. But how about things like uh, civil disobedience or political activism or um, citizens' climate lobby, you know, go lobby? I mean, are all of those a waste of time? I I view them as worthwhile. They're they're empowering. I, I think people should do what they love and do it well. And importantly, not be attached to the outcome because I think the outcome is going to be ugly. Does getting involved in marches and protests make any difference? Not that I've seen. Does that mean we shouldn't be doing those things? I don't think so. I say I disagree with you there in terms of do they make any difference to the ultimate worst case scenario? Well, maybe they move it out a little bit, but they move the needle. I mean, you have, you have a people's climate march where half a million people come down Central Park West and it it makes some difference. It's hard to assess what kind of difference, though. Very hard to assess. I, I don't, it made people feel better. It spent a little money for the Rockefellers to make people feel better. That's who funded that thing. But other than that, I don't see any positive outcome. I see a bunch of people thinking, oh, I did something important today, and I did my share, so now I'm going to go back to business as usual. Got well, to go to the office tomorrow. It's, it's hard to say that because uh, I also have seen since then, I mean, most of the news is bad or negative in the terms that we would say negative. But uh, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund apparently has moved closer to a uh, full divestment. Um, there, there are certain positive signs. It's like, I like to quote the mathematical theorem that if you're going to start from going up to going down, at some point you have to reach the top. And it looks like we're verging closer to the top. And that, to me, is progress. And I think that People's Climate March and, and, uh, and 
bunch of people getting arrested in front of the White House. And, and I think all of those things help. I mean, again, James Hansen, God bless him, and his granddaughter and 20 other young, young people are suing the U.S. government. I, I'm a little unclear about what you want people to do, though. Civilization is a heat engine. You want to keep it going. I think that's insane. It's an omnicidal heat engine that is destroying every aspect of the living planet. It is responsible for the sixth mass extinction. It will be ultimately responsible for our own extinction in the near, very near future. And you want to keep it going? Well, I want to... I want to this legal want, action? That's a very definition. That's the apex of civilized activity, is pursuing anything through the court system. What I want, you, I mean, let's disentangle those. What I want, what I'd like to see, is I'd like to see us reach that top. I'd like to see a change in the mindset where the people who, basically those five corporations who run our mass media and who want everybody to keep buying, where the notion that we can all keep buying and consuming and throwing away where that whole mindset has changed. And so what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a real massive epiphany at which point we turn the, the intellectual engine, the intellectual uh, engine of society into how do we deal with the, the heat engine effect. It's that, that proverbial World War II style mobilization. That's what I want to see. Whether or not it, it could work, I don't know, but, but I sure would rather see us go down trying than go down with Trump at the helm. Well, you know, as you said, Trump is a puppet of another kind. I, I don't think a, any president has had as much influence as most people believe since November 22nd, 1963, and probably long before then. So I think pointing towards the political system is a lot like pointing to the judicial system. It's pointing at civilization, one aspect of civilization, and trying to get that to fix the rest of civilization. And actually, civilization itself is the problem. This set of living arrangements is the, the root of the predicament, of many predicaments. It's the root of the predicament of the sixth mass extinction. It's the root of the predicament of abrupt climate change. It's the root of the predicament of changing in life for money and fouling the air and spoiling the water and eroding the soils and on and on the list goes. And so I think turning to systems that are failing, the judicial system comes immediately to mind. The executive branch, as you pointed out, is another failed proposition already. Pointing to them as cause for hope in our future is pointing to civilization, pointing to the fox and asking for proper care of the chickens. I disagree there. I dis it's, it's, um, it's the responsible thing to do, to look to those institutions that we currently have as flawed and defective as they are and try to change them. But there's something that's driving civilization right now that if you were able to change, in a, if in a heartbeat you could change it, things would start to straighten out. We ain't going to change it in a heartbeat, but it's the meme of money. The operating system of civilization currently is you do it if it, for make, if it makes profit. You don't do it if it doesn't make profit. You do it in a way that makes the most profit. Planet be damned, people be damned, everything be damned except profit. And what it behaves like is money owning us for its own reproductive purposes. That's the way it behaves. So I call it the meme of money. And if you could change the meme of money, if you could get the bankers to realize there's no future in pure profit, if you could go back to sovereign currencies where banks don't own the country that they supposedly belong to, Bank of England doesn't belong to England, Bank of England owns England. It's a private banking company. Federal Reserve does not belong to the United States. We don't control it. So to me, that's my major task, is to make people realize that it's our economic system that's killing us. Yeah, you know, I wanted to go back to World War II with the, when we were talking about biochar. You want to go back to the early 1900s. <laughs> we don't have a time machine. We always got to start where we are. It's not going back to the 1900s. It's realigning towards a, in a different direction. And how fast things would correct themselves if you could get people to 
have the waking up, the epiphany that, you know, happiness is not a matter of, of how, many, how many cars or homes I have. Happiness is a matter of, of, of security for the future for my children and grandchildren. Or if I don't have them, just, you understand. What's, what's our aim in life? Is it, it happiness or is it economic success? If it weren't for Edward Bernays, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But that train left the station in about 1920. So we are having this conversation. If it weren't for the Haber-Bosch process, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. If it weren't for the Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve System of the United States, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But all those things are well behind us. Can we fix them at this late date? We're in the midst of abrupt climate change. We're in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. Every other mass extinction event has required millions of years for the planet to recover and has taken down the big organisms first. Is there a way out? I'd like to think so. Is it playing around at the edges with a civilization run amok? That would surprise me very much. Mm. Again, I won't disagree with you, but I think it's worth trying to change all those things and pushing people as, as, as hard as we can to, to wake up, damn it, and, and change. Um, it's all of the above, well, all of the above moment in time. I agree that pursuit of justice in an unjust system is still a worthy pursuit. Whether or not it will... So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. So let's do that. Let's do all those things. Am I optimistic about the future that will result? No, not at all. Because it's the system that underlies the myriad predicaments we're facing here. Let's move on. I've got in my, my agenda here the sixth versus <laughs> compared to prior mass extinction events. Outline the difference between this mass extinction and previous mass extinctions. Well, we're proceeding an order of magnitude faster than any previous mass extinction in terms of the extinction rate of non-human species. The worst of the mass extinction events occurred about 250 million years ago, sometimes called the Great Dying, and it resulted in the loss of at least 90% of the species on Earth. We're going 10 times faster in terms of greenhouse gas production into the atmosphere, and not surprisingly, we're going much faster in terms of the extinction rate. What was the cause of that Great Dying? It wasn't the asteroid. No, that was not the asteroid. Interestingly enough, ironically enough, of burning coal. Coal seams got caught fire, and that, that triggered a series of warming-related events that when the, within a span of somewhere between about 900 and about 19,000 years caused the temperature of the planet to go from 12 degrees C, or ice age, up to about 23 degrees C, slightly over the 22 degrees C where Earth has spent most of the time in the last 2 billion years. And that transition occurred in somewhere between roughly 900 and 19,000 years. It's a little hard to tell because nobody was keeping good calendar records <laughs> 252 million years ago. But it's pretty clear that we're doing everything wronger, faster than was occurring. So the sixth extinction is coming on faster and stronger and probably will involve more species than the prior events, if you, if you think about it. Of course, but, that only makes sense. And, you know, it, it might take the entire planet down with it right. because of the radiation resulting from the catastrophic meltdown of the nuclear power plants. It might take all of life down with it by stripping away the atmosphere. I, I'd like to think not. I'd like to take action to try to prevent that. I'd like to have a legacy mm. that doesn't include extinction of every life form on the planet that doesn't leave this gorgeous earth turned into a Mars-like rock floating through space. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, for me, that is, when it gets down to it, that's the, for me personally, the best reason for me to keep on, because I should be retired. You and I are both, you know, retirement age, but we're still here we're still spending our time at our own expense trying to wake people up. So, you know, collapse, yes, society goes, maybe those 450 nuclear power plants go, I, you know, not maybe, if, depending upon how society 
goes. Maybe we have a few years to do the orderly shutdown. Maybe, hey, there's no money to spend on shutdown, you know. You Do you think we're headed towards merely collapse of society and, as you believe, extinction of humanity? Or do you think we're headed towards extinction of the planet? I Because of the enormous impact of the aerosol masking effect or global dimming, I think that collapse of civil society, collapse of civilization, whatever you want to call this set of living arrangements, which is already in our way, you don't have to look very far to see people who are struggling greatly and for whom collapse has already come. Yeah. I think that that is a certainty in the very near future, like as early as this September, as late as October of 2019, because of the rapidly melting Arctic ice and ultimately the absence of ice over the Arctic Ocean. So I think that's a given at this point. And because collapse of civilization leads to such an enormous increase in the global average temperature in such a short period of time, I just don't see any way for our species to adapt or mitigate for that very abrupt rise in temperature because we depend upon so many other species that depend upon a relatively cool, stable environment here on Earth. Does that mean extinction of all life on the planet? Maybe, but uh, again, invoking the notion of acting as if, I, uh, we, we will never know. Right, we will never know whether we lost all species on Earth because ours will be among the first species to go. Okay, here's a good one. Timeline, and you touched on this before. So if we're all gonna be gone by January 1st, 2026, what are the milestones along the way? I'd be stunned, absolutely stunned, if we got through this year through this melt season with, with, a, with more than a million square kilometers of ice on the Arctic Ocean, which is by definition no ice, oddly enough. So it's one of those cases where science, which is so good at measuring some things, can't distinguish between zero and one million. Mm-hmm. Close enough. Yeah. Right? So uh, I suspect we're headed there. The, the latest projection I've seen indicates we'll be ice-free this month, July. 2018 wow. and maybe we push it back to august of 2018 but that would be hard to imagine what that tells me is we will observe very rapid heating that may very well cause the collapse of the corn market this year in the northern hemisphere and as a consequence lead to the abrupt demise of industrial civilization because this version of civilization like all previous versions depends upon the ability to store grains grow store you mean when we can't grains. have doritos we're all gonna die exactly bingo <laughs> <laughs> you feel about that the same way i do apparently oh. anyway so so we might get through till next year you know i thought last year that we wouldn't get through the year with with ice on the arctic and melt so we might get through another year and i'm certainly wishing as much I would love to have another full year before we have this extreme emission of methane from the Arctic Ocean, as well as the absence of albedo that will result from the lack of ice in the Arctic. So I would love to think we have an extra year that takes us through September, October of 2019 before we have that ice-free Arctic. So... That would be awesome. But, you know, even the president of Finland has been going around the world telling people that if we lose the ice in the Arctic Ocean, we lose humanity. We lose habitat for our species when that happens. It's a planetary air conditioner. and Without the planetary air conditioner, uh, I don't see us maintaining a set of global average temperatures at a stable level that permits our continued survival. So that's huge. That's absolutely huge and, in my opinion, greatly underreported in the corporate media, the the rapid disappearing of the Arctic ice and how it could be gone this year or next. I'm also told that there's a a masking of 
um, the fact that we're already experiencing in the United States crop failures. That um, a friend of mine who monitors those things saw a report several months ago that the wheat harvest in Kansas um, was the lowest in 30 years. And he went back a week later to download the report and uh, it was gone. They'd taken it off the internet. And again, this is this, this insidious current presidential administration trying to, uh, what? Well, I haven't heard, I hadn't heard that, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. 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 But, but it's, it's, so there, there is tinkering with the, uh, government records going on now to mask the fact that some very extreme, uh, events are occurring already with, with our ability to grow food and the, the, the maps, the, uh, projective drought maps that I use in my presentations basically show agriculture in the United States as being toast. We're going to go bone dry in the, right. You know, so a absolutely. You know, I see reports that suggest we're already in the midst of a second dust bowl in the Southwestern United States. Mm. And I just see a glimmer of a report that pops up one day and then, you know, given the 12 second media cycle in this country, you never hear another thing about it. But if you're really paying attention, you, you're, you're noticing what's going on with the ice in the Arctic. You're noticing what's going on with global average temperatures and the resultant collapse of the grain harvest in the Northern hemisphere and so on. So if you aren't paying attention and most people aren't, then you're not going to notice those things. And so you're not going to be able to connect the relatively few dots required to conclude that we're in the midst of a, a dire climate emergency. Yeah. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll wrap it up here. So I'm, I'm going to bet you. Okay. Let's make the bet. Handshake bet. And we're going to back it up as a hundred dollar bet. So, you know, put some skin in the game, you know, I mean, skin, money, money. Is, let's yeah. make it two to one odds, too. On oh, man. One. So if I'm right, I'm I get twice as much. Okay. So, so exactly. And, and to be fair, well, let's state the bet first. The bet is that a January 1st, 2026, we're both going to be alive to see who is right and who is wrong. And I'm going to say who is right and who is wrong because I'm going to be right. If we're both alive, right. okay. If, if I'm alive and you're alive, or, or even if anybody's alive, if if YouTube yes. is still working, if anybody, I'm going to let me, make sure my kids know this, and they're going to hunt you down and collect hundred bucks. I'm betting you a hundred bucks that I'm going to that that some of humanity will be alive in in 2026. And if I'm not mistaken, your bet is that no, we're all going to be gone, right? January first, 2026. Okay, so in order to be fair, so, I'm going to send you a hundred bucks now. Yes, exactly. I need the hundred bucks in advance because yeah. that's the okay. only way I can win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to pay you a hundred bucks now, and in case you're right, then you, you, before you die, you won't, you know, you won't. We, we won't die knowing that there was this unfinished business. But if I'm right, then January first, 2026, you owe me two hundred bucks. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Good bet. Good bet. Thank you. It's been it's been a good conversation. Be well. Travel safely. Thank you, sir. Take care. Oh, no.